please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. When you do, don't forget to click on all. Because if you don't, you might not get notified of all of the videos. So make sure you click on all. And don't forget in the comp in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box. Well, Mr. and Miss Muslim, we just keep finding more and more problems with the Quran, don't we? As I have stated earlier in the first in the first video that is also labeled as introduction these are the typical arguments of islam that 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 a muslim makes one proclamation but i prove that well it's not what they say it is or that they make a proclamation against the bible and i counter it with what their own scriptures are see they try to say that the Bible is corrupt, but I prove with Quran scriptures that the Quran is corrupt. See, generally, generally, okay, if they are accusing the Bible or you of something, Chances are they are hiding it within their own scripture. So it is best to try to figure out exactly what they are hiding. And in today's lesson, Mr. and Miss Muslim, your own Quran proclaims that people has called it fairy tales. Maybe it's the first real mother goose. So let's take a look at chapter 6, Surah 25. There are those among them who listen to you, but we have put coverings on their hearts so that they do not understand. Again, who is this we? You cannot have a we if your God says he is one. Allah Tawheed. You cannot find Allah Tawheed in the Quran. But yet they claim Allah Tawheed. Okay, let's go on. So that they do not understand and heaviness in their ears. If they were to see all the signs, they would still not believe in them so much so that when they come to quarrel with you, the disbelievers say, talking about the Quran, it is nothing 
but tales of the ancient. Now, why would they proclaim that the Quran is tales of the ancient? Now, notice what the next verse says. Well, all of these is saying myths and ancient fables, fables of men of old, of men of old tales of the ancient. Okay, we are seeing this idea. But let's take a look at the next verse because it is important to keep things in context. From it they prevent others and from Yet they keep themselves away. They ruin none but their own selves, while they do not realize it. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Again, let's keep in context. Yet, if only you could see when they will be made to stand by fire, and they will say, "Would we?" There's Set back, then we would not reject the signs of the Lord and would join believers. Notice so far, Muhammad and the Quran is not disputing the fairy tales of the past. If Fuddle you was being accused that they were fairy tales of the past, would he try to defend it? But no, all he can do is throw it back on them that they're, that all the covers on their hearts. Never denying that they are fairy tales. There's one verse, there's two verses after. In fact, what they were concerning earlier will become clear to them. If they were sent back, they would again go for what they were forbidden from, as they are sheen, sheen liars. Okay. Think about it, Mr. and Ms. Muslim. They say there is nothing but this worldly life of ours, and we are not going to be raised again. If only you could see when they will be made to stand before the Lord, he will say, is this not true? They will say, of course, by our Lord, it is how will, or he will say, then taste the punishment of, for you used to disbelieve. Here is the Quran is trying to make those fairy tales true. They are not fairy tales, but they are true stories that eventually became a fairy tale. That's what Muhammad is trying to say. So, and this is only 
the first one. Next one is 831. When our verses are recited to them, they say, we have heard, if we wish, we can compose a discourse like this. It is nothing but the tales of the ancient people. Again, tales of the ancient people. And this one says, myths. Ancient fables, not but fables of men of old, tales of the ancients, formal people, legends, famous the ancient times. Again, we are seeing the same attitude. And when they said, O oh Allah, if this is indeed the truth from you, then rain down stones upon us from the heavens, or bring upon us a painful punishment. Why would anybody even do that? But okay. It's a test. O oh Allah, if this is indeed the truth, punish us in some way so that we know. And some of these Muslims will want to proclaim, you can't test God. Yeah, in our Bible, it says we can. The story of the fleece. And it, it is it. <sighs> okay, sorry, someone knocked on my door, but the fleece story in the Bible tells us Christians that we can test the messenger. And then Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon the earth beside, then shall I know that Thou wilt save Israel by mine hand. Okay. He was very nervous. He have done the fleece three times. The third night, he asked for it to be in reverse, that the fleece be dry and the ground be wet. And it was as it was asked. So then, therefore, Gideon knew that what God had told him was true. We can test the Spirit. We can make sure that the message we are hearing is the true message. Yet why is it that Muhammad cannot be tested and Allah cannot be tested? While it's hard to prove, but the theory is that Allah is a false god and 
fake people don't want you to test what they are saying. Okay. The same with some of these prosperity gospel evangelical preachers. What do they say? Oh, just trust me. Yeah, right. No, I'm not going to trust you. I am of the 1%, and hopefully with this channel, we can make it eventually 2% to 3% on up to hopefully more than 50% of people will start checking out the stories themselves. This is the biggest reason why I put all of the scriptures on the screen. So you can see it for yourself. And if you have any doubt, you can look it up yourself because I'm not hiding a single thing. Look it up yourself. And for the ones that might proclaim that is a bad translation or blah, blah, blah. Do not blame me for bad translations. If you have a problem with the translation, you have a problem with the translator. Not with the with me because I'm just reading your translation. And when someone says that about me using the King James, I then prove to them that the King James or the Textus Receptus, at which that is what the King James was translated from for the New Testament, the Textus Receptus, I can show that we have scrolls dating back now into the first century. That is a big statement. To the first century AD, how much better can that be? Even playing it conservatively or well, Dr. J, uh, Dr. J said, uh, considering uh, that of the liberal dates. The gospel, well, all of the New Testament was all written down within 25 to 40 years after Christ rose from the dead. Now that is a mighty statement. A statement that turns out to be very accurate because we now have, like I said, scrolls dating back into the first century. Whereas Islam? No, it was written down 204 years later. Even at 40 years after Christ resurrected, that, that is five times the length. No one that knew Muhammad was still alive, but there were still a lot of people that have, that have eyewitnessed the death, burial, and resurrection was still alive when 
the New Testament was being composed. And the Catholic Church might say, well, it was the Catholic Church who said what book shall be written. No, that of the Catholic Church only looked at the books that was accepted in a town called Antioch, which is where the New Testament church really got started. And that seemed to be the central headquarters for the New Testament church is in Antioch. They took a look at what Antioch accepted as the New Testament. Many of the others, well, you can say that the church in Antioch did not accept those other books. That is why they are not in the New Testament. Yet, in our Bible, we can question the Spirit. It is better to question and to know the truth rather than to blindly follow the wrong spirit. That is how God looks at it. That is how Elohim looks at it. It is better to test and make sure. Because even Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. Let's see, where is that scripture? Do you see what I am doing is that although I, although I say it is in the Bible, I look it up to make sure. So, it is in 2 Corinthians 11.14. So, let's, let's look at it. 2 Corinthians, did I say 7.14? Nope, 11.14, okay. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Okay, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Are you seeing this? Maybe in the cave at Hira, Muhammad did see Satan, because here it is in our scripture that Satan can transform himself into the angel of light. Why? Because he once was. He was the chief angel. So, 
when we Christians look at this and look at the experiences Muhammad had, we Christians have no choice but to say that the angel that Muhammad saw must have been Satan because every well almost everything in the Quran goes against the Bible. Did you hear that? Almost everything that is in the Quran goes against the Bible, and yet your Quran confirms the Bible. You have a problem. I don't. I do not have a problem with proving to you what our scriptures say. And I don't have a problem showing to you what your scriptures say. Okay, then the next verse. And Allah was not to sin scourge upon them while you were in their midst, nor would Allah sin scourge upon them while they are seeking forgiveness. Again, Allah is not saying that the allegations is not true. And what privilege do they have that Allah should not punish them? See, Allah wants to punish those who question him. While they prevent from, and I will just too bad trying to pronounce that name. Even though they are not its custodians. Its uh, custodians are none of none but the God fearing, but most of them do not know. Are you tired of seeing that the Quran has been accused of being nothing but fairy tales? Eh, I'm not. Let's go on. This is only the, th the third verse on the list. If you have taken a screenshot, it is 16 and verse 24. When it is said to them, What has your Lord sent down? They said, It is nothing but the tales of the ancient people. Okay. Apparently, Allah says, When it is said to them, I'm not sure. Uh, well, this one says, When they are asked, What has your Lord sent down? They say it's nothing but tales of the ancient people. Hence they shall bear the fruit, the full weight of their burdens of the day of judgment, and also some of the burdens of those whom they mislead without knowing. Remember, evil is the burden they bear. So, Allah is calling the people who calls the Quran nothing but fairy tales, evil. Interesting. Those who were before them made plots. Then Allah came upon their buildings from the foundations, so roofs... 
fell down upon them from above. Okay, this is something totally different. But again, we are seeing that the Quran has been called a fairy tale. 21, no, 23. Eighty-three. Yeah, twenty-three, eighty-three. This is what has been promised to us and to our fathers before. It is nothing but the tales of the ancients, okay, probably ought to go to 82 to get this in context. They said, it is that when we die and become dust and bones, is it that we will be raised again? So this is talking to the other to the other uh, Arabs and not the Christians or the Jews. This is what has been promised to us and to our fathers before. It is nothing but the tales of the ancients. Even his own people called it the tales of the ancients. Say, whose is the earth and all those therein, if you have knowledge? They will say Allah's. Say, would you still pay no heed? Say, who is the Lord of the seven heavens and the Lord of the great throne? Okay, Allah is right now just... Uh, what is the word? Um, thumping his chest. Instead of answering the allegations again, Allah is thumping his chest. It seems like that Allah does that a lot. That Allah thumps his chest without answering the question. And they said, The tales of the ancients he has caused to be written, and they are read out to him at morn and evening. This is why Muhammad is called the ear, because if he hears something, That sounds good. Guess what? It's going into the Quran just because it sounds good. Say, it is sent down by the Quran who knows the secret in the heavens and the earth. Indeed, he is most forgiving, very merciful. Usually, when you see this, this ends a statement. So, Allah did not answer the allegations again. And there are two more that, well, pretty much says the same thing. 2768 and 4617. It has been accused that the Quran is nothing but fairy tales. Nothing but fairy tales. How can we take the book seriously when it is in your own historical records that the people of his time did not take it seriously? Think about Ms. Think about that, Mr. and Ms. Muslim. 
how can we take your holy book seriously when the people of Muhammad's time did not and called it fairy tales of the old? That only means that the stories in the Quran are pagan because remember, remember that the Kaaba used to have 360 idols inside it. That was a lot of paganism going on, and a lot of those fairy tales from those pagan gods ended up in your own Quran. Think about that, Mr. and Miss Muslim. Thank you for coming all the way to the end of the video. We hope that you have learned. But now comes the call. The call to come to Jesus if you are not baptized. God's part was that he sent his only begotten son, John 3.16. Notice his only begotten son. There is other items where other people has been, been called a first son, but keep it in context that is not the begotten son. Jesus is his only begotten son. Jesus shed his blood for our sins. That the Spirit revealed God's word and his will. That is all God's part of our salvation. We need to hear God's word. Romans 10. John 6.44 We need to believe what we hear. Again, John 8.24 Repent of our sins. We are a sinner. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died and rose for our sins, for our iniquity. Romans 10, Acts 8. And then we are to be baptized. We are to be fully submerged. That of the Greek word, it is known as baptismo. Fully submerged is what that means. Okay, Mark 16 and first, of, and also in first of Peter. And these are just a couple of the verses for each one. There are a plethora of others to confirm these steps over and over and over. And then remain faithful. I will be talking about that in that of the 
video 49, which is talking about are we saved by faith or by works. And in video 50, which is talking about the other things that God has called us to do. Yes, do is a verb. It is an action. So, video 49, which is done, but it will not be released. See, whoops, are we saved by works? Part 1. I have got that one done, and it will be released on August 6th. This one that you are watching right now, it is video 48, which will be released August 5th. And then video 50 will be talking about the other things that we are called to do. Now, like I said in video 49, we do them after we are saved. Not to be saved. We do these things because we are saved. So, if you are not yet a Christian, I do strongly encourage you to be baptized if you cannot be for some reason, whether if you are in a Islamic country or there is a drought going on or for some other reason, pray to God that he accepts your heart Our God is a merciful God. If he knows that there are reasons why you cannot be baptized, I have faith, although I don't have any proof of it, but I have faith that he will accept your heartfelt prayer as a temporary substitute. After all, in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice animals as a temporary substitute until Christ came. Did you get that? Although I am not saying that you should then sacrifice a uh, animal, but there was a temporary item that was given to them to ask for forgiveness until Jesus came. So, let us know down in the comment section if you have decided to give your heart to God and give your whole being to God. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and have a blessed day. There is one more message coming up at the end. So, when are you Muslims going to get it? There is a problem. No, not a. There are several problems, potentially counting into the hundreds of problems. about Islam 
and I don't know if I will have the time to cover them all. Instead, why don't you come to the one that says in John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. These are Jesus' words. You can't get to the Father by any other means. Not by me, not by Hatun, not by David Wood, not by Dr. Alfadi, not by Joel Osteen, not by anybody else that you can think of, not even through your Imam or Muhammad. The only way to heaven is by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died and paid the penalty for our sins. Mark 11:28 says, Come unto me, all, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, at which weary and labor means the same thing, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest and peace, peace knowing, knowing that you are going to go to heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you catch that? Believe in Jesus. Become baptized. And but and put your total faith in Jesus. Quran says, 354 and 830, that Allah is the best of deceivers. If he's the best of deceivers, how do you know he is not deceiving you? Think about that. If Allah is the best of deceivers, as 354 and 830 tells us that he is, because Allah admits to it. How can you be assured he is not lying to you? In 46 verse 9 of the Quran, Muhammad says that he does not know of his salvation and therefore cannot guarantee anybody else's. Wait a minute. Think about this Mr. and Miss Muslim. Muhammad was the best example of a Muslim, and yet he does not know of his salvation. Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father. Have came to earth willingly just so he can pay for the penalty of sin. Are you ready to be a Christian? Jesus is waiting, but there isn't much time left. The end is drawing near. And you don't want to be left behind. When you are ready, 
I know of many Christians that would love to help you be saved, and I am one of them. We are not here to hate you. If we were, if we did hate you, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. We would just let you be and keep the gospel to ourselves. Instead, Jesus said, there are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place. We all can live in heaven. We just need to accept. We just need to accept his invitation. Contact me when you are ready to give up Islam. Thank you and have a great day.
So, when are you Muslims going to get it? There is a problem. No, not a. There are several problems, potentially counting into the hundreds of problems about Islam. And I don't know if I will have the time to cover them all. Instead, why don't you come to the one that says in John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. These are Jesus' words. You can't get to the Father by any other means. Not by me, not by Hatun, not by David Wood, not by Dr. Al Fadi, not by Joel Osteen, not by anybody else that you can think of, not even through your Imam or Muhammad. The only way to heaven is by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died and paid the penalty for our sins. Mark eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, at which weary and labor means the same thing, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest and peace. Peace knowing. Knowing that you are going to go to heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Did you catch that? Believe in Jesus. Become baptized and put, and put your total faith in Jesus. Quran says, 354 and 830, that Allah is the best of deceivers. If he's the best of deceivers, how do you know he is not deceiving you? Think about that. If Allah is the best of deceivers, as 354 and 830 tells us that he is, because Allah admits to it, How can you be assured he is not lying to you? In 46 verse 9 of the Quran, Muhammad says that he does not know of his salvation and therefore cannot guarantee anybody else's. Wait a minute. Think about this Mr. and Miss. Muslim, Muhammad was the best example of a Muslim, and yet he does not know of his salvation. Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father, have came to earth willingly just so he can pay for the penalty of sin. Are you ready?
to be a Christian. Jesus is waiting, but there isn't much time left. The end is drawing near. And you don't want to be left behind. When you are ready, I know of many Christians that would love to help you be saved, and I am one of them. We are not here to hate you. If we were, if we did hate you, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. We would just let you be and keep the gospel to ourselves. Instead, Jesus said there are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place. We all can live in heaven. We just need to accept. We just need to accept his invitation. Contact me when you are ready to give up Islam. Thank you, and have a great day. And don't forget, in the, in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box.